Uh, the, last, the last question that we had uh, really speaks to uh, some of the findings in the report. Uh, the, um, the, the young woman uh, talked about the structure of schools that make the students seem more like the predators. Almost, uh, it, 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 it takes on the form of a correctional environment rather than the academic environment. One of the findings in the report, if you look at the, the last section of it, you don't have to now, uh, but if you look at the last section of it that talks about uh, school-related factors, one of my findings was that black students are almost 500% more likely to pass through a metal detector on the way to school than a white student. Now, I've only had one job where I had to pass through a metal detector, and it was when I was working in the prison. And incidentally, I felt more unsafe at that job than any other job that I've had, including Howard University and the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. And we have to ask ourselves, what does this do to the, to the attitude and spirit of teachers when they have to walk through these de metal detectors and they are constantly reminded that they are in an unsafe environment and the possible perpetrators are the ones that are in their classes? They become more guarded about their work. They become less compassionate about the needs of students. And that's why it's important for us to be able to look at these. Now, we know that there's been some, you know, like Columbine, I've, I've, I've um, often had the question, and it's probably not that hard for me to find the answer, but I wonder if Columbine has metal detectors at their school right now. Um, but you go to any inner city school that may or may not have had a violent incident, but we have metal detectors because we have these assumptions. So we do have to be active and involved. 